Hi, I'm John Mayfield, the real estate tech guy, with another Global Real Estate School podcast. Welcome to the broadcast. Thanks for joining. I'm John Mayfield, the real estate tech guy, and we are continuing our series with USA Mortgage, and I'm really excited to have Charles Garcia with me today. Charles is from the South Dakota region. And he's a veterans advocate, which I wanted to talk to Charles about VA loans, because I love working VA loans. And Charles, very quickly, I'll tell you a story. This was years ago. And I've I've taught real estate for years. And so I'm kind of having a sluggish time as a real estate professional. I'm not selling anything. I'm like, I felt like a baseball batter that kept striking out every time you would go up to to the plate and to use a baseball analogy, but I remember getting a call from a borrower and uh, he wanted to buy, wanted to buy a home. And so back then, first thing, first question I would ask is, well, where, where are you employed? I wanted to know a little bit about employment. And he said, I'm on disability. And I'm thinking, well, you can't discriminate against someone if they're on disability. Cause I knew that from teaching and, and, uh, I asked him about his bills and he said, well, I have a gas bill and a water bill. And I said, no, I mean like car payment, credit cards. He goes, no, I don't have any bills. And, and so I'm thinking, and I thought, well, I wonder if he's a veteran. So I said, are you a veteran? And he said, yes, I'm a, I'm a veteran. And I said, well, we could possibly do a VA loan where you could get in with no down payment. And Charles, he said to me, he said, I have no idea what you're talking about. And I said, well, we could, we could possibly do a VA loan. Well, long story short, I sold them a home. The seller paid all their closing costs and they got in that home and Charles, they were crying at the closing table because they were so happy and knew nothing about the opportunity to get a VA yeah. loan. So I think as real estate agents, we forget the power of VA financing, but uh, what, um, you know, kind of starting with some of sort for some of our students getting pre-qualified and pre-approved, what's your advice as far as, um, agents and working with buyers and what, what are things you see that you wish the, the buyer knew a little bit more about, or was briefed a little bit better from an agent? Sure. Um, actually, like I, I just ran into um, uh, an, like something that happened this morning to me. I, I got contacted by a client that one of the realtors that I am starting to work with just, uh, you know, referred to me. And I think one of the biggest things is really, really pushing them to get pre-approved soon rather than later. Because um, a lot of them, a lot of from what I found are, are basically just telling agents, well, I haven't found anything yet. So I'm not, I haven't gone through the process yet, you know, and by the time they find something, a lot of times it's too late, you know? So that's the situation I'm in right now is I had a client that called me and said, Oh, by the way, uh, offers are due at 3 PM today. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh crap, <laughs> it's, it's noon already. I said, I'll, yeah. I'll do my best. I can't promise anything, you know, just because these are things that, you know, pre-approval should have started, you know, long before right. you even start looking for a home. Um, and here I am taking up more of your time and you probably need to be working. <laughs> oh, no, that that's, file, but. that's completely fine because it's, you know, this, these are important things that, that a lot of agents should know and especially right off the bat. And, you know, this, this agent that I'm starting to work with is a little bit newer in the industry as well. Um, she, I mean, she's been in for, for about a year. But after speaking with her, she wasn't really pushing to get that pre-approval stage done. Um, you know, she just kind of said, hey, have you gotten pre-approved yet? And basically the the client said, well, no, I haven't gotten pre-approved yet because I haven't found anything yet. So this is the time where they should say, well, actually, you want to pre- get pre-approved like right now. You know, and the pre-approval right. can last up to 30 days or up to 90 days, depending on um, on who you worked for and how long they, they let their pre-approvals last for. So 
as long as they're pre-approved now, you you basically, if there's nothing that's changed financially or credit wise, you know, you're good for 30 days or for 90 days right. and you can keep shopping throughout that window. Exactly. You know? And, and I, we did another podcast with Megan who works with you up in South Dakota and Megan sure, yeah. was talking. And I think so important about sometimes agents don't understand the difference between a pre-qualification and a pre-approval, right. but that pre-approval, what you're talking about allows you to start verifying the paperwork yes. to get all of that up front, which takes a few, you know, takes a little bit of time it can, to yeah. get that all completed so that when they do find a home, first of all, that pre-approval will carry a lot more weight. But secondly, then all you really have to do is the appraisal and those, you know, right. the title work and some of that type of, so great point. Now what's, and, 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 and I ahead. apologize to kind of butt in, but, um, no, you know that the, you, you do have a great point on pre-approval and pre-qual and what the differences are, um, but a lot of times these days, um, th just the the words just get thrown out, or it will say pre-approval letter when they haven't really verified anything. You know, so the the way I see it from my experience, there's there's three different stages. There's pre-qual, which is a customer gave me information. I looked at the information. It looks good. And I pre-qualify them. And then there's the pre-approval stage where the customer gives me the documents. I verify the documents up front. I run it through the automated underwriting system. And now they're pre-approved. Now, we also take that further at USA Mortgage. We take it further to what we call a TBD file. A TBD file is basically the pre-approval stage but we go further in actually submitting all those documents to an underwriter to get underwritten up front. And oh, okay. that really is what makes it stronger. Yeah, I did not know that, which yeah. is neat. And then you call that a TVD? Uh, what is TVD, that? Um, to be determined. So <laughs> the okay. reason we call it that is because on the address line, since they haven't picked out a, a, a property. Okay, that makes sense. So, yeah. So yeah. I, I call it an upfront underwriting, but yeah. And that's an important point. And I'm yeah. glad you pointed that out so that the listeners and viewers understand that, you know, there is this process as I, as I told Megan on our podcast, I said, I had a truck driver who told me he made 60,000, this was years ago, $60,000 a year. And on paper, on the mortgage payment, he wanted to apply for he qualified but when he right. brought his tax records in he was writing everything off and he was only reporting six thousand dollars a year income and he was self-employed uh, yeah. so you know it taught me that a if you're working with someone look at those tax returns or w-2s but because that's what you have to go off of and especially for uh self-employed yeah. people they've really got to be able to show some uh some history of of uh and and that brings me up and something i'd love to talk about in in the ce class i discuss we look at character capability collateral can you kind of walk us through what's the documentation or how does that look like to for the just, you know, the character, I know collateral depends on what type of loan product, but what are, what are the documents used to really look at the character and capability? I mean, length of employment, what are things that sure. are important for you to see or red flags that could be a problem? Yeah. I mean, first of all, you know, as far as income, you know, we, we want to make sure it is stable. Do they, and I think that's where sometimes there's a little bit of a misconception that, oh, they have to be with the same employer for two years. Not necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, what we like to see, in, you know, to, to be able to get the pre-approval for the mortgage is that there's stable income. If they do move to a different company, is that, you know, are they, are they moving down? Are they, um, is the income declining versus going up? Because really what you want to see is that if somebody is going to make that that move to a different company or a different position that the income should be going up um 
As far as, and, and it also depends on what type of loan it is. For example, FHA loans, you can't move employers three times or it, they won't allow you to move three times within the 12 month, the last 12 months. Okay. So if the last 12 months they've moved three or four times, that's typically a, a ground for either maybe we need to try and do a manual underwriting versus an automated underwriting on that. Um, but generally the, the FHA guidelines say if, if they've moved three times in the last 12 months, usually they'll say no to, to that. So they just need to maybe take some time at this, you know, position and, and just kind of work through it. Um, right. So we do like to see that when it comes to credit, of course, we, we want to try to see, um, a little bit more of a, a, a better credit history, at least in the last 12 months as well. You know, of course, the longer the credit history, the better. Um, right. But typically the last 12 months, we want to see, you know, on-time payments, credit cards not being maxed out and things like that. So these are things that, that we kind of look at up front and just kind of give us an idea of, okay, will this work or will this not work? What humps are we going to have to go through to be able to make this work? Right. And I think that's just another uh, validation of why you said at the beginning, getting pre-approved, because really it's kind of like you have all of these different loan programs available and each one has different types of requirements. Exactly. And until you can really look at the credit report and all of the other information that the borrower brings you, you, you really don't know how to direct them or what the best way is to direct them. And exactly. one of the great things that I appreciate about USA Mortgage, and I saw this 10, 11, 12 years ago, back when, when the first, when that mortgage meltdown in 2008 was happening. And I remember one of your loan officers there was really talking about how he was trying to help people who were having challenges buying a home mm -hmm. kind of get repositioned. And USA Mortgage had this credit repair opportunity that you could really counsel people or I say counsel, but you could at least point them in a roadmap that could get them on the path to home ownership if they followed and did these things. So right. I guess yeah. that's something you kind of, you know, help with because there are people who want to buy a home, but maybe there's just a few things they have to understand, like not changing jobs every yeah. two months. <laughs> <laughs> yep, exactly. Yeah, there's there's a lot that that goes into it, and um, you know that that's one of the things that that I've made a promise to myself ever since I got in this industry is that I'm I'm here to help people. You know, right. yeah, I'm here to provide a you know good income for my family. I'm here to provide my family with a future, but at the same time, I'm doing this to be able to help people buy a home as well. So, right, what kind of um, irks me a little bit is is when they're coming from a different company and saying, "Well, they didn't pre-approve me." Okay, did did they say, you know, just in the initial conversation, did they did they tell you why they weren't pre-approving you? No, not really. They just said, "I'm not approved this time." And it's like, yeah, okay. You would you would think that if someone in my position where, like, we're here to help somebody buy a home. You know, right. it's not just an accept or deny type of deal. It's okay. Hey, let's work on this. You know, and, and I've worked with plenty of clients that I've had before that, you know, one of them took a year and a half to get there. And unfortunately, sometimes we have to put it on them of, hey, I've paved the roadmap for you. You just have to walk the road. You just ha have to follow that yellow brick road. Right. And you know, maybe you're not able to do it now, but keep going that direction. And at That's some point, right. we'll get you there. You know, That's and right. a year and a half later, you finally called me and said, hey, here's what I've worked on. I've worked on this. I think we're ready to go. And sure enough, we were able to, to make it happen. That's so. right. And sometimes people might think, like I've had borrowers before who said, well, I, I wouldn't qualify for a home loan because I filed bankruptcy. But sure. yeah. Yet the bankruptcy was tied to something such as a medical issue 
that was able to be verified and every situation is different. So I want, right. want our listeners and viewers to understand until you talk to someone like Charles and they really can look at your file, it's right. hard for them to, to give an answer, but even situations like bankruptcy or um, something on your credit report, if it can, sometimes if you can prove or you can provide the documentation, yep. those things can uh, you can get over that hump, as you said. So, yeah, you well, I wanted to yeah. shift. Go, go right ahead. If you had anything else to add on that, I just because I know sometimes people might be watching or listening, thinking, "Well, I filed bankruptcy." I and I don't know. Does it? If a person has filed bankruptcy, does it take a, a certain length of time? And I know it also depends if there was a real estate involved in the foreclosure. But kind of a general overview. Uh, if anybody's yeah. watching who's had a bankruptcy or a situation. Sure. And, and that's one of the one of the most common misconceptions about, you know, being able to qualify for a loan again, um, depending on the loan program, we're trying to qualify them for and depending on how long it's been. So, for example, we've got the two main types of bankruptcies, Chapter 7 and Chapter 13. Right. So Chapter 7 right. is basically absolving you of all of your debts you know you're not you if you had a mortgage that's probably going to get taken as well um, any other debts it gets wiped out it's a clean slate when it comes to chapter seven for fha and va typically they want to see a two-year what we call seasoning period or waiting period and that's after the discharge date so we have to wait at least two years for that now when it comes to chapter 13 that's a little bit different. Chapter 13 is basically almost like a consolidation type of bankruptcy. They take all your debts, consolidate it, and you're making payments to it. So okay. with, with chapter 13, you can actually make something happen after 12 months, but only if there's a few um, there's a few prerequisites, of course. Number one, you would have had to meet been making your payments on time for the last 12 months and number two it has to be approved by the judge or by the trustee whoever um you know oversaw your your bankruptcy file or bankruptcy case so i've had that situation before where you know hey we're we're not quite at the two years yet well what type of bankruptcy did you go through well chapter 13 have you been making your payments on time for the last 12 months yes so we kind of go through the process of, okay, we just need to get the, the trustee or the judges okay to let you do this, and then we can go make an offer. Okay. So your- Excellent. That's great. Great yeah. information. Yep. Now, kind of quickly shifting gears to VA loans. And again, I want to be respectful of your time, but um, a lot. I, I did a news interview here in Missouri. I'm president this year for Missouri Realtors and one of the local TV stations in St. Louis called. And unfortunately, a postal worker in St. Louis in his 50s who was trying to buy a home, he was going VA, was being outbid by all of these cash buyers. So he like tried 12 or 14 times, could not buy a home. There's some misconceptions about VA loans that agents want to kind of say, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to get tied up with a VA loan. What are, what would be some of the pros? I mean, I've done VA loans with loan officers like you, and we've closed them in 30 days. I mean, as quick as a conventional loan, there are certain things that can get hung up, but let's talk about why should maybe agents not be so um, afraid afraid yeah VA <laughs> love a veteran love VA loan so yeah there there are a lot of misconceptions about VA loans and I actually uh, here in my community I, I try to get real estate agents to my VA classes so I can kind of hopefully help change that mindset a little bit mm-hmm. um, you know one of the most common mis- misconceptions is, is when it comes to appraisal you know, a lot of people think that, oh, it's a VA loan, it'll get appraised less. When that's that's not necessarily the case, you know. Um, what they go through with their valuation between, you know, conventional uh, FHA and VA, and even 
rural development loan, the valuation portion itself is is not any different from each other. You know, there's there's no difference there. There's basically a, a certain type of scorecard that they follow when they're looking at the valuation. They're always doing, you know, the comparables and things like that. But they don't right. look at it as, well, this is VA, so I'm going to knock off like 5000 or 10000 off of it, you know, of what I think the price is. Mm-hmm. Really, um, th- there isn't. How they're different are when it comes to minimum property requirements. So when I teach my class, I always talk about the, the, the three S's when it comes to VA loans. Structural stability, uh, sanitation, and uh, safety. So... As a real estate agent that's that has a buyer or um, as a buyer's agent that has a, a veteran buyer trying to make offers mm-hmm. on homes, these are things that they're going to want to look into or want to keep an, an eye out on. If if there's any question at all and within those three S's, that's where you might want to kind of put a pause on it, assess the situation of like, okay, what's making it unsafe? unsanitary and non-structural or not structurally stable you know is it a big deal is it not a big deal if it looks like it's going to be a big deal then it may be at that point maybe let's look at a different home because otherwise we're going to have to deal with this we're going to have to deal with that we're going to have to deal with this right and then we're going to have to ask if you don't have extra money to be able to do that before closing we might have to ask that seller to provide us now our offer isn't as great as somebody else. Right. So, you know, we see it here all the time. I mean, when you look at a $350,000 home, there's sh- here in our community anyway, it's one of the higher end loans or higher end um, real estate mm-hmm. that you shouldn't run into anything like that. The only thing you might run into is possibly a peeling paint, you know, like uh, exterior peeling paint, which sometimes it's easy enough to to negotiate or, or fix before closing. Um, you know, these are things that I wish a lot of sellers agents would kind of look at and say, you know what, this isn't really that big of a deal, you know, it, or, or they know what they're selling, you know, they know what the property looks like um, right? versus, well, you know what, Conventional loans are better, so we're gonna we're gonna put push VA aside, you know. So uh, there's just a lot of misconceptions that uh, another one, another big one is um, zero down payment makes it an inferior loan, or makes the buyer not um, as well off as right. like a conventional loan or something like that. You know, um, they think that because a VA loan is zero percent down, it's inferior. To a conventional loan where somebody's putting in, you know, 5%, 10%, or 20% down payment. That's not necessarily the case. The 0% down is the benefit of a VA loan. Just because they're doing 0% down doesn't mean they don't have any money in the bank. Exactly. And in a case like that, if they're not using that money towards, you know, if they do have money and they're not using that towards a down payment, that just means they have more money to either a be able to make an offer or b have that um you, you know safety net if something happens down the line where hey we need to to redo this um, right but Those yeah it's, great, uh, great points and i you know there's nothing more satisfying as i mentioned that told that quick story at the beginning and i I I have other pieces to that story because I remember I was so worried when they were crying and I, and I asked them, I said, did I do anything wrong? And they said, no, we're just so happy that we bought, we're able to buy our own home. And they, and I remember him telling me, I knew no idea that I was entitled to a VA loan. And uh, so it just, it's a very satisfying feeling. And, and I've done many VAs and I, as a real estate agent, something our viewers and listeners who are in, if you're getting your license, team up with somebody like Charles who can do a VA seminar for you. I did a, a live VA seminar, had seven people, seven different couples come to that VA seminar and all seven people bought homes. They That's were awesome. seven veteran couples who wanted to know how to use their VA entitlement. 
I um, did a VA online VA webinar, had two people show up and uh, they both bought properties. And that was great because I could use Facebook advertising and, and just advertise it to military who were renters and living in my zip code. And so you right. think, well, only two people showed up, but you know what, that, there were two people that wanted to be able to get a VA loan. So it's a great program and we'll have Charles's information. So if you have questions, you can reach out to him and thank you so much for sharing that and your expertise, just some great information that you helped us with. Anything you want to add in closing that agents, uh, from the loan process that would be helpful to know or remember or? Um, not really. Uh, I think, I think just soak up as much information as you can about, uh, about the process and, um, possibly a little bit inf of information about the program. Obviously it's not up to real estate agents to, to know, um, for example, the VA guidelines, you know, it, it's not right. It, it's not on their lane really. But having a little bit of knowledge of what the VA can and can't do or what an FHA loan can and can't do, and, and, and as well as a conventional loan, exactly. uh, it'll help direct them to, you know, to the right loan officer that might be able to, to help them a little bit better with the job. So, yeah, and that's why it's so important if you're watching find somebody like Charles with USA Mortgage and I trust USA Mortgage. I, 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 they've been around for a long time in Missouri. Katie Otto is a friend of mine. She comes to, to all of our Missouri realtor meetings and USA Mortgage is a sponsor of many of our events. And so, and I, and I was so impressed that day when there I was at a at a meeting and one of the USA loan mortgage officers wasn't trying to really pitch loan products. He knew we were, he knew the pain point at that time was there were many people out there that wanted to buy homes and didn't know how to. And he said, mm -hmm. we want to help them get their credit back on track and we want to help repair and show them a path to home ownership. And I thought that was impressive to me. And so I've just stayed uh, close to your company and appreciate your awesome. company. And I do want to say N M L S number two, two, seven, two, six, two, and they are an equal <laughs> housing lender. So, uh, they're a great group. I don't know if I have to do that on the podcast, but on uh, any of our uh, advertisements, but they're sponsoring, uh, sponsor the podcast and very helpful for Charles and all of them that are coming on and sharing their time. But Charles, thank you so much. We'll yeah, let you exactly. try to help that loan officer out. Yeah. And uh, feel free to reach out to Charles. He, he'd be glad to help you in any way. So uh, right. as always, I want to thank you for watching the podcast. Charles, thanks for joining us as well. Yeah. Too. Thanks for having All me, right. John. Appreciate it. Have a good day. You're welcome. Ha have a great day, everyone. Thanks. Thank you for listening to the podcast for Global Real Estate School. I'm John Mayfield, the real estate tech guy. Go out and make it a great day. Topics discussed on this podcast are for informational purposes only and are not a commitment to lend. Additional terms and conditions apply. Interest rates and products are subject to change without notice and may or may not be available at time of commitment or lock-in. DAS Acquisition Company LLC is not affiliated with or endorsed by any government entity or agency, including the USDA, HUD, or VA. DAS Acquisition Company LLC, doing business as USA Mortgage, MLS number 227262, Equal Housing Opportunity.